In ancient Japan, there were many wars between powerful and ambitious feudal lords. These wars were mainly fought on the battlefields. But not only that, there was a world of shadows and fertility. Only highly trained men and women could enter it. These fearsome shadow warriors were known as ninjas. The origin of the ninjas is obscure as their very existence. They arose around the 12th century at the beginning of the Kamakura Shogunate. The word ninja was not always used to designate these secret agents. The most common term was shinobi, which means the one who hides. In the beginning, ninjas were just spies. They pretended to be ordinary people, walking the streets and talking naturally to citizens in order to obtain valuable information. Many of these agents pretended to be merchants, blacksmiths, artisans, and even monks. They used many disguises to accomplish their goals. After all, nothing drew more attention than someone dressed in black and wearing a mask. Some became so skilled at pretending to be ordinary people that they spent years or even their entire lives as spies without arousing any suspicion. With the increase of political intrigue in feudal Japan, ninjas became increasingly in demand. On the other hand, security in castles and other important areas increased. Many of these places were guarded by very skilled samurais. The art of spying became incredibly risky. Many ninjas were executed after being captured. The ninjas became specialists in various martial arts. These arts are known as Taijutsu. They mix Judo, Jiu Jitsu, Aikido, Karate, and Kung Fu, all adjusted to become serious injuries and put the opponent out of combat as quickly as possible. But this was not enough to secure the safety of the ninjas, and weaponry training was also included. Ninjas specialized in the use of many different weapons. Most of them were sneaky, used in enclosed spaces such as rooms or corridors. The dreadful makibishi was one of those weapons. Small pointed iron junctions thrown against the ground when ninja was chased. Very difficult to see in the dark, they caused serious damage when stepped on. They were very effective against horse-ridden pursuers. They could also carry a weapon called kusarigama, consisting of a small sickle and attached to a chain with metallic weight at the other end. Kusarigama was a difficult weapon to use and even more difficult to fight against. It had an enormous range. It could do a lot of damage with its chain and, if that failed, the sickle was used. Tekogaki were weapons used in wrists, especially effective in hand-to-hand -hand combat. The classic shurikens and kunais were not thrown to kill the enemy, but to wound him and leave him out of combat. They were thrown in sequence, seeking to reach vital points on the body. Contrary to the common idea, the swords used by ninjas had no straight blade. Many carried normal wakizashis or even katanas. Many ninjas also used chain mail under their kimono to ensure their protection. Ultimately, they could throw a smoke bomb to blind the enemy and escape to ensure their safety in the shadows. Ninja training began as a child. In addition to fighting techniques, they had to learn how to hide their presence in the most diverse environments. They also needed to master survival tactics in the forest, learn how to climb cliffs and walls, and resist hunger and sleep. To be masters in art, the ninjas needed to learn the various accents of different Japanese regions. The use and manipulation of gunpowder or poisons was also something delicate and deadly. The ninjas did not follow the Bushido, they had their own code of conduct and ways of facing life and death. The information about this code of conduct is not very precise, it's in a document known as Bansen Shukai. 
The training also included meditation and breathing techniques, in addition to a practice called Kujikiri. It consisted of creating manual signs symbolizing elements such as fire, wind, water, earth, lightning, among others. Kujikiri allowed Ninja to focus his mind and even distract his enemies. These new skills led to ninjas being chosen for assassination and sabotage missions. This work was considered dishonorable and dirty by most of the samurai and the general population. The ninjas were people despised by society, but vital agents. During the Sengoku Jidai period, the ninjas emerged as a serious threat. They were hired as mercenaries and killed many generals, samurai, and nobles during the war. They also infiltrated castles. Inside them, they caused fires, poisoned the water, or food wells. They even placed bombs, destroying the gates of the castle and allowing the entrance of soldiers. There were also female ninja, the Kunoichi. Their main role was to infiltrate where they pretended to be cooks or housekeepers to enter the castles and fortresses. The most beautiful could pretend to be geishas, the famous luxury courtesans. This allowed them to get even closer to their targets. These ninja arts became known as ninjutsu. Many ninjas even fought openly on the battlefields, causing terror and confusion with their unusual tactics. During the Sengoku Jidai, some ninja families emerged, specialized in different secret arts. Two of these families had great prominence, forming powerful clans. The Iga Ryu clan, the school or tradition of Iga, resided in the province of Iga, a mountainous area that was difficult to access at that time. The clan Koga Ryu, the school or tradition of Koga, was in the province of Omi, a humid region interrupted by rivers. Differences in terrain and environment allowed these two clans to create their own spying tactics. These two ninja clans fought a secret war. Their members ambushed each other, not only because they were hired to do so, but also to eliminate rivals in order to control the espionage networks. With this increase in ninja activities, many became legendary warriors. The most famous was Hattori Hanzo, real name Hattori Masanari. Hattori Hanzo was born in the province of Iga, and, as was the tradition of his clan, was trained as a child in the arts of ninjutsu. At the age of 16, he was employed as a samurai in the service of Tokugawa Ieyasu. Hanzo was a master in the use of the spear. His bravery and savagery on the battlefield made him known as Oni no Hanzo, the Devil Hanzo. One of Hanzo's greatest contributions was the rescue of the wife and son of Tokugawa, who had been hostages. Thanks to Hattori Hanzo, Tokugawa managed to survive the Sengoku Jidai and achieve the Shogun title. With the end of the wars, the ninja clans became a serious concern of the feudal lords. These clans had accumulated much information about members of the nobility, trade routes, and government fraud. In order to control these clans and to end disputes between them, the Shogun Tokugawa Yoshimune, 8th Shogun of the Tokugawa lineage, created the Oniwa Banshu. The Oniwa Banshu was a secret organization with members of the Iga and Koga clans, serving the Shogunate. Its main role was to spy on feudal lords to prevent rebellion or corruption. This organization existed officially until the beginning of the Meiji Restoration. It is believed that some members were sent to the United States to spy on the U.S. government. During the Meiji Restoration, samurai and ninja family members were banned from carrying weapons, and in an attempt to end these families, the Japanese government imposed heavy taxes on them. This caused many to flee to other parts of Japan, changing their last name. During this period, the image of the ninjas as practicing warriors of magic became popular in Japan and the West. Stories about ninjas able to fly, able to run over water, 
or able to shoot fire with their hands filled the imagination of many people. During the Japanese invasion of Manchuria in 1931, some ninjas were recruited again to spy on the Chinese government. The ninjas were never officially extinct and some families kept the old names of their ancestors. It's perfectly possible that ninjas are still among us nowadays, watching our world as hidden warriors.